Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning into the broadcast today. Last week, we preached a sermon entitled, Where There is Resurrection, There is Life. That was part one. This is part two. If you are a born-again believer, you possess the resurrected life, not just life, Christ in you, the hope of glory, and that's called big life. That's what I call it, big life, glory to God. So I tell you, you're going to be blessed. Call a friend. I say it all the time. Tell them to turn that television on, get a pencil and a paper. I want you to take some notes concerning all of this because you need to go back and forth on those notes, and it will bless you. This is part two of where there is resurrection, there is life. I like to say it, big life. Watch this and be blessed. Write this down. Christ's life is beyond the reach of death. That immortality is contained and involved in the idea of life. Let me say it again. Christ's life is beyond the reach of death. My God, you're born again. That power, that immortality, see, is beyond the reach of death. That immortality is contained and involved in the idea of life. That's what he was trying to get over to, Mary, uh, to Martha. I am. So if you're going through some tough times, just think of this word, I am. It don't make no difference what it is, spiritual, physical, or financial, or all three. I am. I am is he who sent me. Sometimes I go to services or I go to a church and, and I, when I said, the Lord sent me. I wasn't just looking for a meeting. I don't just go around to find a meeting. I don't even ask for meetings. Unless the Lord speaks to me and people tell me, listen, if you ever get an a, 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 a open date, call me or something like that. I know you're busy. I'm about ready to go to Bermuda. I ain't never been to Bermuda in my life. I know it's stuck out in the middle of the ocean. A lot of water around there. And the Lord said, go to, go to Bermuda. I said, I don't know nobody in Bermuda. He said, well, I do. So I had Denise, where's Denise? She back I had Denise, I said, Get, see if there's a church in Bermuda. Because they have pink sand there. What kind of people live in Bermuda with pink sand? I ain't never heard of pink sand in my life. Anybody ever been to Bermuda? Anybody? I never have. I don't know. We found him. It turned out he has the big, he's the head of all the churches. Just called him and said, uh, you know, oh, yeah, I know him. He want to come to Bermuda. He said, come. So we're going to Bermuda. Notice that. Christ's life is beyond the reach of death. That immortality is contained and involved in the idea of life. So the reason why I have so much joy, because I celebrate the life God gave me. You understand? I celebrate it daily. Write this point down. We should celebrate the life for it is far greater than the resurrection. I tell people I got born again. But after I say that, then I start talking about the life that God gave me. The life that I now live. And that greater is he was in me than he was in the world. And if God be for me, that's life. Who could be against me? And I'm more than a conqueror. I say to that mountain, be thou removed. I don't want him to look at you. Be thou cast in the sea. I don't have time. People say, I never see you sick, sad, discouraged, busted, despondent. I don't have time. I got so much life. See, you, you got to understand that life needs to be given in every which way, shape, and form. It'll bless people beyond their wildest dreams. I've had people come and say, but Jesse, we so, just smile. You make a smile. I said, okay. How many teeth do you want to see? <laughs> One lady didn't believe that these teeth were real. She stuck her fingers in my mouth. I should have bit the woman. <laughs> she literally got, I want to say they're real. I said, yeah, they're real woman. Get your fingers out of my mouth. That's a true story. They got some crazy people. The spirit of stupid come up on people sometimes. And it's hard to cure stupidity. Don't look around here. I saw some of y'all look around here. 
We should celebrate the life for it is far greater than the resurrection. Why did me and Kathy have a good marriage? That doesn't mean we don't argue. We would never argue if the woman would listen to me. I'm, I'm three years older. I was driving my tricycle before she was born. So I got three years of knowledge she didn't have. Look, it don't impress her at all. But the reason why, life. Como shall I say that, Lord? I don't have to go on a date once a week to keep my marriage together. Don't shout me down when I'm preaching good. You got you to have romance. What? Romance? What is romance? That's a hard word to define. In other words, if you love somebody, you got life, romance is an automatic part of it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing that, you know. But a lot of times, Kathy said, what are we going to do today? Like as if I can tell it because she ain't listening. <laughs> because if I say to her, I don't want to do that. Okay, well, what are we going to do that? Well, I don't know. What do you want to do? I can't tell you who don't want to do what I want to do. So what do you want to do? Well, I thought we'd go downtown and eat at Mr. Mead. Okay, that starts it right there. Then maybe she starts talking, maybe we can walk around the quarter a little bit. Okay, that's the other. And you know, after we eat, then we just go home and take a nap. Okay. <laughs> then we wake up and say, what's for supper? <laughs> Cajun people, they talk about food all the time. <laughs> we ate last night. <laughs> I was celebrating Rich's birthday. <laughs> at PF Chain. And now we got food everywhere. And we're talking about food. <laughs> we went over to the North Shore. Uh, we had lunch. Food. Went to the uh, Chifuncta restaurant. I mean, that's the, that's the name of the river, right? The Chifuncta River. You got to speak in tongues to say that. <laughs> you lift your hands up. Chifuncta. People go, I, I, I got the interpretation. <laughs> And they kept bringing food, and they're kind of, and we just sitting there, and we just throwing it all to Richie, you know, because it's his birthday. He choose it, my lord. But when it came to dessert, everybody got a spoon. All you came with, <laughs> hitting the cross. <laughs> it was good. Yeah, we had a great time. You can see people say them people enjoy themselves. Why? Life. Nobody looked at each other and said, "Why'd you come?" No, life. You see what I'm saying? It was such a blessing. Actually, for the first time in our life, we, Richard and, and Tammy picked me up, me and Kathy up, and we, there was no traffic. We were early on the North Shore. There was no traffic on the causeway. There was no traffic in, in, in Metairie. There was no traffic on the interstate. Where's everybody? What were they doing? Sucking crawfish heads. That's where they, where they were all home. <laughs> You know, balling crawfish, <laughs> doing whatever. It was wonderful without no traffic. So we didn't know what to do. Because, you know, we, uh, Greg and, and, and Kara are so sweet. We got here early. And they said, we'll meet you at the restaurant, which means that they didn't want us at their house. <laughs> oh, no, I'm just, uh, look at it. She goes, ah. Oh. <laughs> That's what Richie said. No, 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 no. <laughs> so we got to drive around. So we went to stores. Where else? Looking around. And had a nice time. I, I don't know much about the North Shore. Though. I get confused. I don't know where Mandeville, Covington, or Madisonville it is. Because when you go down there off that bridge, you better hit it fast. Because wh whichever one you go, you're going to wind up somewhere. But it seems like everybody knows where I-12 is. Not me. I didn't go that far. I took a wrong turn. <laughs> You know, had a wonderful time and came back and, I, and prayed for someone, went over uh, to uh, Carrie's mother's home, beautiful place, prayed for her sister, believing God for complete healing. Had, had a one got to talk. Kathy was talking so much we could hardly leave. <laughs> okay, that's the number one lie right now. And I, 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 but I was just enjoying myself. <laughs> Kathy said, was behind, my, behind my back going, mm -mm, somebody pull the string, you know, I mean, break the thing, you know. But it was fun. You know why? Life. Just that simple. Mm. Write this down. Cemeteries are the emptiest places in the world. 
You know, the, why are people afraid of dead people? They can't hurt you. Why are you afraid to go to a cemetery when it's dark? That's the safest place in New Orleans. Because even the criminals are scared to go in there. <laughs> Am I telling the truth? Well, I'm in my car. You better not be there. Steal it. When you in it. Cemeteries. It's amazing to me. Why do you always have fences around cemeteries? Because they're dying to get in. I heard that. Was, I thought that was funny. I, People freak out over graves, man. And if you really want to, especially on Good Friday and something, people go put, you know, flowers, and that's a wonderful night, you know, in remembrance of people. And if they go at night, boy, if you're behind one, go, hello. You got all the flowers you'll ever have. You can take every flower. Ain't nobody coming. And what you don't know is as soon as you leave, people steal your flowers and bring it to home. How many people know what I'm talking about? What happened to, what happened to mama's flowers? Cemeteries. Or was it seminaries? No, no, it said cemeteries. <laughs> uh oh. Are the emptiest places in the world. I tell college kids when they go to Bible school, don't come here looking for a wife. You don't want to come here looking for a wife. Because everybody try to act good when they're going to school. You want to meet your wife when you ain't in school. Because then you're going to find out what she really is. Or what he really is. Now it's nice, to, you know, if you can find your mate at a, at a Bible school or Bible college, that's a blessing. But you know, they're normally on their best behavior. So the best way to get a spouse is pray for one. And say, Lord, send me the lady or the man that you want me to be with all my life. And somebody show up and say, oh, Jesus, she a little ugly. <laughs> well, then pray this prayer. Blind me, Jesus. Because <laughs> beauty is in the eye of the beholder. I've had people tell me, isn't my husband, my husband's so good looking, I think. Your husband's face looks like a pepperoni pizza. I've had guys tell me, let me tell you something, man. I'm just, I love my wife. She's not fat. Well, what's all this stuff hanging out over on this side? What is that? I can't see it. See, that's love. That's life. Yeah, yeah thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Kathy said, don't talk about women's weight. Well, they talk about it all the time. And they try to lose the best parts. Look at the men. I'm going to get off of that because I don't know. I, you know, I want to live another day. <laughs> Write this down. When a man really believes in Christ, when a man or a woman really believes in Christ, an act of union takes place between Christ and the Spirit. When a man really believes in Christ, an act of union takes place between Christ and the Spirit. Look what he said in verse 26 of St. John 11. Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. And that's not whosoever liveth and believeth, you shall never die. Because a union has taken place. Now let me tell you about that body. Yes, it's your earth suit, but God hadn't forgot it. How many people you know maybe died in terrible pain or maybe, I don't know, cancer ate them down to the bone or maybe they lost limbs and legs and all kinds of parts and terrible wars. But let me tell you something. You think you bury that body? Some people say, I, I want to be cremated because I don't want worms eating me. So you prefer fire to burn you up <laughs> and a roller to crush your bones. Then they put you in a mixer. That's what happens. 
and then they sweep the dust out, and it might be some other people's dust. You don't know. And it may be somebody you hated all your life. I don't know. <laughs> That's what happens in cremation. You don't know. And you think, well, I poured them in a the river. God says, I don't care if you turn them into dust. Or water cremation. All those men and women that died in wars, in those ships. That's why you can't find human beings at the Titanic. Water will dissolve the bones. That's a cremation in a sense. Dissolve the flesh. Go. Yet, God Almighty, because of life, will call to that body. Come out of there. That's life. And all the dust particles, how that can, it's almost unbelievable. But it's true. And that body will be connected together. Ah, but God will put liquid God in that body. And he'll let the devil know, you kill this body, I'm going to resurrect it, and I'm going to give it life. Isn't that amazing? Where there's resurrection, there's life. Think about that, sir. Let me say that again. And I love that point. When a man really or a woman believes in Christ, an act of union takes place between Christ and the Spirit. Now, what makes the resurrection? Write this down. Life makes the resurrection. Life is the higher and con 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 conclusive thoughts. That word I want to use there. Conclusive thoughts what I want to say. Life makes the resurrection. Life is the higher and conclusive thought. In other words, thank God for resurrection day. But people ought to see the life that the resurrection Amen. caused to come. In fact, the life is what pulled the resurrection in. And Jesus in hell, in hell, will you leave my soul in hell? No, 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 no. And hell lit up like a light, partner. And you hear that dumb, stupid Satan who thinks he's something goes, oh man, if we'd have known, we'd have never crucified him because Satan can't handle life because he's death, he's decay. That's all he is. Isn't that amazing? Hmm. And why would you be afraid of a dead devil? Just like you're afraid of dead people in the cemetery. If you never want to be robbed, build a house right in the middle of the cemetery. <laughs> Ain't nobody going to your house. You don't want your family going to your house? Build a house in the cemetery. <laughs> That's amazing to me, buddy. See, life makes the resurrection. Life is the higher and conclusive thought because it's real. You see, I've already died once. I got born again. And I shall never die again. And there is a whole generation that their flesh won't die. It'll be changed, but it won't die. So if you really think about it, graveyards is such a waste of money because God can blow holes on every one of them. <laughs> I hope she don't mind me saying it, but I'm going to say it. We have a wonderful person that works for us named Denise. Now, we got two Denises, but this girl's Denise. Her husband, uh, Dale, just a wonderful guy, went home to be with the Lord, and I preached his funeral. And they cremated Dale, and would they put that in an urn is what they call that? Or whatever you like. You know, some people put you in a cigar box. <laughs> That's okay, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, but whatever you want, you know, a vase, not a vase. That's Dillard's. A vase. <laughs> and she has his ashes, I think, on a, on, a, on, a, on a fireplace or something. And is Denise in here? I don't know if she is or not. <laughs> she may be, she's wonderful. She works for... Uh, for when all the way, when she way in the back, Denise, I hope you don't mind me. And I said, I said, Denise, why do you have it there? She said, I want to see the rapture. 
I want to see him fly out that bowl. <laughs> fly out that. <laughs> Can you imagine? That's Denise. I thought, that's a good idea. <laughs> Can you imagine? <laughs> Nothing but dust. And there's Dale. Come on, mama. We're going. I just love that. I hope the rapture happens in my lifetime. I can't wait to see the saints rise when Jesus comes back for us. I mean that sincerely. We need to be ready for Christ's return, ladies and gentlemen. We should be celebrating this life because it's even greater than the resurrection. See, the resurrection was an event. Life and eternal is forever. And I celebrate that on a daily basis, not just a Sunday basis or an Easter basis. You understand what I'm saying? I, I, I celebrate it every day, glory to God, because I'm born again. Listen, when you believe and know that you have eternal life with Jesus to look forward to, there's nothing to fear. We live forever. Maybe you're living in fear of something and you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. I can pray for you right now. You ready to get into this kingdom? Father, in Jesus' name, I ask you to save people that are watching. I ask him, Lord, that they repent of their sin. Just say, Father, forgive me. I for forgive me of all my sin. And Lord, you not only wash it away, you expunge the record. And Father, I thank you for saving people right now with this simple little prayer. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I like Easter. Don't you just love Easter? <laughs> it's the birth of Christianity. My Lord, the, the, the day of Pentecost was the birth of the church. Easter is the birth of Christianity. And Christmas is the physical birth of Jesus. Oh, Lord, I'm starting to preach here. Glory to God. I, I get excited about this. This is more than chocolate rabbits and candy. You know what I'm saying? This is big life. You heard me say it a while ago, big life. I stay right there. Bless God. I want, I want to show you some things. I'll be back in just a moment and you will be blessed. I hope you're enjoying this because I'm enjoying preaching to you. Watch this. I'll be back in just a minute. There's a world that needs to be saved. Our mission is to preach the gospel of Jesus to that world. That is why we here at Jesse the Planet's Ministries believe the unbelievable and operate in the impossible. God is continuing to direct us to expand our outreach to more people in more places and through more ways than ever before. We are advancing into the frontiers of ministry to change more lives through one simple question. Do you know Jesus. Listen to me, it is beginning. The light of Jesus is shining higher and brighter and further than ever. People from all over are responding to the message of Jesus. Nothing can stop the light of God's love from reaching people and changing lives. Are you ready to believe the unbelievable, receive the impossible, because it's doable? In my new book, Believe, you will be challenged to believe the uncompromised Word of God so that you can receive all that God has for your life. Yes, it's time to unlock your faith in God's promises and believe the truth of the gospel. For your donation of $5 or more, you can receive your physical copy or digital download of Believe at JDM.org. It's time to make your faith work. Yes. Order your copy today and remember to believe. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited about my April product offer. It's a book I wrote called Wanting a God You Can Talk To. 
Listen, when you have that intimate fellowship with Jesus and can recognize the ways he wants to speak with you, you can live the resurrected life no matter what's going on around you. I hope you get this book because, you know, I wanted a God I could talk to. Hello, Jesus. Hi, Jesse. How do I get it? You go to jdm.org and you can get that. It will bless you and minister greatly to you. Now, let me tell you something. I have been traveling and preaching up a storm. I would love it if, if you could come to one of my meetings. I'm going all over this country this month. So go to, go to jdm.org and check out our meetings page. I may be in your area. Maybe I can meet you personally. That would be a blessing of the Lord. I hope you can do that. Partners, thank you for your faithful financial support. Nothing too small and nothing too big. We got projects coming out of our ears. You know, people say, when are you going to slow down? I'll tell you when I'm going to slow down. When God quits giving me projects. But, buddy, he got a list of stuff for me to do. I hope you can be a partner if you're not a partner today. And partners, thank you for your continual, faithful financial support. I say it all the time. Nothing too small, nothing too big, and 100% goes in the world evangelism. Isn't that a blessing of God? Been debt free. We have not paid interest to no company, nowhere, at any time since 1982. That's something to say. To God be the glory. We just decided to believe. The Bible said, you know, uh, owe no man anything but to love him. I took that just verbatim and believed that like I believe for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Thank you, partners. Help me today to reach people and change lives one soul at a time. Don't miss next week. Don't miss it. Very important. It'll be the theme I'm preaching on this year. Give God a job. See you. God bless. Did you know angels are real and many of them are here today? God's Word is full of supernatural experiences by people just like you and me. My new book, The Hidden Help, I share a few of those biblical stories and some of my own personal experiences with angelic beings. Remember, this world isn't all there is. You are unique in God's creation and The Hidden Help is always here for you. Order your copy today at jdm.org. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My April partner offer is Give God a Job. It's our theme this year. Sometimes you feel blue, <laughs> you know, and I got blue on, but I like this blue. Look, you need to get this message. Give God a job. How do I get it? You go to jdm.org and get your copy. It will help you. It'll change your life. You keep God busy, He will keep you busy. Give God a job. Do it today. To get in touch with God, you have to use His language. And I'm going to tell you what His language is in just a minute. If you want something, you have to say something. Now, what is His language? Mark 11, 24. What things soever ye desire. When you pray, prayer is His language. When you pray, believe that you receive. 